Hello everyone, it's a new day and I've had a request from, oh dear my top keeps blowing up, I've had a request from Mary, Mary if you're watching, hello, thank you, um, for a garden tour, a proper garden tour and I agreed to this and then afterwards it's just been raining and miserable for about two weeks, about a week and a half at least and as you know if you've been watching my vlogs recently I've really been focusing in the garden on um, sort of making a barrier against the road and trying to get rid of the brambles along there and whilst I've been doing that the rest of the garden has just got neglected so I said I'd do it so I'll do it but the garden is not in the best condition at the moment even our guy that we have coming around to mow the garden hasn't been around so the lawn isn't even looking good but I didn't want to leave it any longer I, th I thought well shall I leave this until I spend the whole summer really working on the garden getting it looking nice and then I thought well there's no there's no point in that because the garden is already past its best flower wise so I thought I'd better actually quickly get out here and show you even though the weather isn't great and it's a bit windy and the traffic is really busy even though it's Sunday so I hope you can hear me and I thought I will show you around anyway some of the I won't give you a proper full tour I might save that for late May early June next year sorry Mary <laughs> um, like I said the garden isn't great at the moment so I'll just show you like little pockets of it if you don't mind and please forgive all the sort of messy bits around the place so let me where are we now yeah you can probably see a whole load of mess behind me I didn't really look and it's so bright today I didn't really look at what's behind me in the viewfinder a whole load of mess that's not good is it not a good start so our back door is just there so we come out here <laughs> it's not usually this quite this bad behind here we've got the old my old computer chairs my old desk chairs all waiting to go to the dump um anyway so most of the plants behind me were already here when we moved we've got a shrub here with beautiful white flowers it's really pretty and I don't really know what it is. I think it's called mock orange. It, when I look at the pictures, that seems to match up the best. But it doesn't have a scent. It doesn't smell to me of orange. So I'm not sure what that is. And that's just sort of starting to finish flowering now, really. Below it, we've got... Uh, this is not a great start. I don't know the name of this one either. That's currently flowering on these yellow pom-poms. And I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of yellow flowers at all. Um, but the foliage is really pretty. I really like that silvery foliage. It's great for flower arranging, particularly at Christmas. The silveriness looks really good in like flower displays. That's really overtaking this area. Also a white flowering hebe. Oh my God, my top. <laughs> There's also a white flowering hebe under there that's really getting overtaken by this. So I need to try and cut this back and allow space for the hebe because that's pretty as well. We inherited one, two, three, four, peonies from the previous owners and they've never once been consistently flowering <laughs> I don't know maybe maybe it's my fault maybe I'm not giving it what it needs they only flat we only had one flower and I'm afraid that's just gone in fact it might be easier if I just talk and point at the plant this is the one that I think might be mock orange tell me if you know differently so it's got pretty white flowers there that are just going over now it's really good at being cut back this plant I cut this right back this winter and yeah you can see I cut it back hard and it's all got all lovely new shoots so that's doing well this is my mystery plant I don't know what this is called there's my sad peony it was quite bushy this year now this plant here you'll see this a lot around the garden this is a euphorbia it self seeds everywhere except where I want it I don't really want it in this bed and you can tell I have recently weeded this bed because all the new weeds are coming straight back up again so this is like a, a meadow sweet and this bed is also full of cornflowers which I chopped down yesterday actually because they were just thud finished and I'm thinking if I chop them down now they might flower again oh that one needs to be done they might flower again later so here's the struggling hebe oh we've got a couple of sticks in the way I mean, it's a really pretty fluffy white flower this one so it'd be nice to give it a bit more room and this frothy campanula coming down over the path that's pretty 
Yeah, so there are these lovely walls here that were also here before we moved, which I really like. And, and this method of having bits that stick up out the wall, that seems to be a Somerset vernacular thing. So we come back round here. This is our old table and chairs that we need to sort out. So I've got a before clip to show you of this flower bed because I weeded this on Monday. It's now Sunday and I cannot believe how quickly all this has just come up again. It's even starting to flower here. So I'm um, a little bit disappointed. So I need to get the fork in and really try and get those roots out. So I planted this wallflower here. I don't know if you've been watching, remember from the vlogs, but this bed is absolutely full of Spanish bluebells in spring. And I always struggle to grow something in here afterwards. There used to be three wallflowers. So this is the second one, which is struggling, clearly. We also have a little bit of Campanula in here which used to be much more prolific so we've got a clump of it round my fairy which got got completely damaged by my mower man which i was a bit cross about but yeah this bed here i do struggle with i'd like to grow something tall because it's not a good because of course i can't grow anything tall against the field because of the cows but nothing seems to grow in grow in here i think it's very dry i was thinking about trying japanese anemone because what it needs to do is not i think the spanish bluebells stop any new growth in spring so it needs to not sort of grow start growing until may but yeah i really tried foxgloves but it foxgloves clearly do not like the soil they just i've tried a few times and they won't come back um okay let's move on so we've got a little um a peony we didn't get any flowers off that one this year and this is my sort of rockery which is a bit of a mess as you can see <laughs> we've got a hellebore here that i moved here from somewhere else in the garden so that's that's done well the campanula is spreading over here nicely i need to sort this is a water feature that i bought for my birthday one year need to give that a good clean out and try and get it working again and um, we've got a pretty little geranium down there that's just sort of starting to finish. This is a mystery flower. We'll have to wait and see what that's going to be. I bought it, I bought it from Tesco's and I, and I don't think it had a name. <laughs> so there we are. This plant here is Granny's Bonnet or Aquilegia. It's so pretty and sort of late April. And I'm hoping I can get it to spread a bit more because... I used to have loads of this, but it seems to be going. I seem to have less of it every year lately. And the rest of this bed is sort of filled with more of the euphorbia that has self-seeded itself. And so also here we've got a hawthorn, a white flowering hawthorn that just grew up out of nowhere. That self, that just self-seeded and grew there. And it's grown really fast as well. Not sure about that. I do like, I do like, um, flowers in May it's pretty to have it there but um yeah we'll see I don't know whether I'm going to try and shape it a bit better or I don't know so here we have a large mahonia which has got these lovely blue berries which I much must have a go at doing some natural dyeing with and it has lovely sort of cascades of yellow flowers in winter that smell beautiful really does smell lovely and it attracts bees in winter which is good but I just don't like it these, these leaves are so spiteful, particularly when they get older. I gave this bush a really hard cut back last winter and it has just grown back with a vengeance. But as soon as those leaves get old, they are really spiteful. Although I hate getting rid of like mature plants, I, th I think it's gonna go. And I want to make this flower bed bigger and bring it sort of right across here and right over to the path. So yeah, following on from here, lots of self-seeded euphorbia. Again, I'm not keen on this sort of tropical looking flower leaves, but it is quite nice to have an evergreen that uh, fills the borders in winter, um, which is quite nice. Here's the other peony. We had one tiny little flower on here, uh, but sadly that's now gone. And here we have a, a geranium, which I bought from a local National Trust property. The flower bed behind me that runs up against the field is absolutely full of two things. <laughs> One is geraniums and the other is bramble, which I'm really struggling to get rid of. So we inherited from previous owners this geranium that flowers quite early, sort of April time. And that is really pretty. There's a mix of dark pink and pale pink 
and that's really lovely it's a really nice sort of early start to the garden really and then I filled it out with a few more geraniums that I've bought in various different places there's a lady in the village that sometimes sells plants I've bought some from a the nearby town fair and some I've brought from my old garden from over 12 years ago I love geraniums they're so hardy they they can be moved they can be split and separated and the slugs most importantly the slugs don't eat them i don't know whether it's being against the field or not but we have hordes of slugs coming into this garden and i have tried in this bed all the nice autumn flowering daisy style flowers and the slugs just obliterate them so if you know of any late flowering geraniums please let me know because i would like to get some august and september color in this border but i'll um i'll show you what it looks like at the moment we now have company so i can't obviously for that reason i don't want to spend too much money along here because if i do manage to get rid of all this bramble then obviously the cows will have much easier access and yeah i mean this geranium for example cost me 20p so if the cows eat it i'm not too fussed i'll be disappointed but there we are also when we moved here this whole border was full of conifers which we've cut down but we have still got this we have still got the stumps left over so that's what these mounds of grass and ivy are <laughs> um yeah as you can see the bramble has got completely out of control along here we've got a lovely elder which i don't know whether how big to let this grow because i don't know it'd be nice to have some shade this is south facing garden we have no shade in here in the summer at all so i'd like to let it grow but then of course it will also block the view and we have this gorgeous view why the previous owners had a whole row of conifers blocking that view i do not know so the next geranium to show you this is one of the ones that i split into a few and brought with us so this came with us from the old house um, it's so pretty it's doing really well this year and this is the one that i told you about was early flowering i never quite have the courage to cut them right back to the ground but i think i'm going to this year i did plant a rose in here i think it's a ballerina rose and i'm regretting it i kind of like the idea of having just a geranium border really it doesn't look too out of place actually but i think these grow quite tall and i think then it would so i'm gonna wait obviously until this is finished flowering and then i think i'm going to move that over to here i think that would look quite nice here so yeah walking along more of the more of the spring early spring geranium now I've got another geranium I planted in here which doesn't seem to flower yet so it'd be quite nice if this one is a late flowering variety I can't remember where I got this from now this plant see this is the problem you get all the country hedge plants just cropping up it had quite pretty white flowers similar to elder but actually a little bit whiter but they absolutely stank so I think I'm going to cut that right back because I don't think that's I don't know what it is but wasn't too keen on it <laughs> this is more of that 20p geranium that's spread about nicely this rose yeah this i planted a while ago this whole area here needs so much work let me step back to give you a fuller picture it's just got chock-a-block this bush here is a forsythia that flower is sort of late march in yellow again another yellow flower but that was already here and that seems to be spreading so i need to dig these up and possibly give them away in free cycle or i know my mum wants one actually yeah this needs a lot of work we've got geraniums in here too that i've planted um this one which hasn't flowered yet is more of that lovely purple one that's more of that cheap one and that's another cheapy one as well but they do provide nice color in the in the borders yeah so i need to clear that out and i need it's all full of ivy as well so i need to get the ivy out we do have this lovely pink rose that is climbing up it but it's flopped down oh goodness it needs badly needs deadheading as well i don't know what variety of rose it is but it's a really good one i mean this one is obviously starting to fade but look how many buds are still coming and it and it um responds really well to deadheading it just keeps flowering all through the summer so yes as you can see my archway is still on the floor i'm hoping we're going to do this later today actually because we went to b and q this morning and bought a couple of steaks 
to stake it in and hopefully that will help keep it in position. I'm not going to show you in the world garden. I'm going to wait until that's actually done. I've got another big geranium here which doesn't seem to be flowering very well this year. This is the flower. Let me move this giant bramble out of the way. So this one usually flowers really well so obviously it didn't respond well to the dry spring but this is quite a striking one I like that one. I've got an oriental poppy poking out at the back there. I'm trying to stick to a colour theme of pinks, purples and whites in this main bit of the garden. So things like the orangey poppy over there I've, I've uh, tried to move a few times and in fact if you've seen the poppy that the cows keep eating that originated from this one. Poppies move about quite well so I'll have, I might have another goat moving that but this time I'll put it in a pot so that I can move it out of the cow's reach. So as you can see this border here is a complete and utter bramble fest again and I have actually tackled them once already from here to about here which took an hour. As you can see that is, bit is slightly better but oh my god I mean look at the length of this bit of bramble here that has sprouted you know in about a couple of months that length i mean i've got i've seen no chance with this stuff have i i have actually planted a few roses in here because i thought with the ivy backdrop here we need some bright colors so i bought a few pink ones that just cost two pounds from tesco's last year we did have one flowering here oh yes here's here's one we've got one in bud over here it's amazing they i do recommend supermarket flowers they're so hardy and obviously there's more of that early flowering geranium the whole running the whole way around around this bed okay next and i don't know if i've shown you this before so that plastic box is where i keep the cushions for my swing chair and this is a very sad sorry state of a well this well used to serve us and the cottages opposite us yeah it is a proper well it, it's not just a garden feature but sadly somebody had re-roofed it with these heavy terracotta tiles and tons of concrete to get it to stay i don't look that's the top of it and it just went over in a couple of storms i was walking loki actually at the bottom of the field and i heard this almighty I felt it, I felt the ground shake and it was that roof bit falling off. So that obviously needs a lot of work and what I, what I would dearly love to do one day. We need to get a cover on this because it's got quite deep. But the previous owners just used it as a bit of a rubbish tip. They just chucked their compost in it, they chucked all their rubbish down it. So it just remained high. I would love to one day excavate that <laughs> get some historical finds out of it that would be so interesting underneath all this there's actually a sort of stone circular feature you can just about see a bit of it there which i'm trying to turn into my little herb garden so this sage we brought with us i think from the old house I, actually i really can't remember oh my goodness it it is doing well it likes it there also this rosemary my parents gave me that it's a tiny little plant about that big <laughs> and that was only like three years ago and it's just this huge lovely bush now and then we also have this herb which i still don't know what it is claire if you are watching this claire and spiros would know yeah so i'd love to know what this herb is it has really delicate white flowers a bit later in the summer and then we have this Blimmin' sycamore. I am, I'm sorry people, I'm sorry anti-weed killer people, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some weed killer on that. It's just the more I cut it back, the, the healthier it grows, <laughs> the healthier it regrows. So I'm gonna try and get rid of that. And then amongst the herbs, we've got a couple of sort of scrambling roses, which are really, really pretty. Although they're not, again, then all looking a little past their best. I only came and deadheaded this like two days ago and obviously the wind and the rain that we've had this week has just knocked them for six because it's a real shame not to show you it all completely all pink and white. It looks very pretty. Okay, so now we're back to the bits that you have seen plenty of as I've been working on a sort of a makeshift fence to go against the road. Oh my God, someone's having a barbecue and it smells delicious. So let me try and point these out as quickly as we can. I've got a hazel growing there that I think I brought with me from the old house. Yes, I did. That's finally doing well. I was thinking the other day, I'm sure we never used to have privacy issues with looking that way. And I couldn't remember what was there before. So I dug out some old photographs 
and there seemed to be like just a natural thick bramble hedge that side uh, so I don't know whether what I've been doing wrong perhaps I needed to keep it trimmed better whatever it is the bramble hedge has gone and we've had to do some work ourselves to give us some privacy against the road but yeah all of this stuff here I've planted since moving here so we've got a couple of buddleias which will look beautiful in a couple of weeks time I expect. Um, the ash tree and another sycamore there have just naturally grown. We've got two eucalyptus here and are getting a little out of hand I think it's fair to say but they are beautiful and you can't smell it but standing here right now it smells beautiful. It smells like you know when you're on holiday. <laughs> It is a good one for evergreen Christmas decorations as well. I need to cut back the ivy because I think it is taking over this bed and preventing some of the plants that are planted here. We've got a, <laughs> we've got a single purple flower there on a geranium. I think that is also one I brought with us from the old house. We've got another hellebore there and another geranium that one I bought in the village this is another one of the purple we've got on the opposite side of the garden that came from that we brought with us from the old house and it's not even like I planted that in the old house the previous owners of that planted it so this geranium is about 25 years old and still going strong so yeah another reason for geraniums uh, we've got a rock rose I can't remember its proper name which you get as you can see is just past its best now and there's actually a path here my feet are sort of walking along it but then the rock rose has come over the path i need to sort of gently push this back i've got to be careful with it because i know they don't like being moved but i would like to get my path back and once i've sorted out the well it'd be nice to have this pathway through so we've got some more roses we've got a lovely purple hebe here it's done really well this year that's the best it's looked I need to try and get it to grow up a bit again against the road trying to keep that sound barrier going we've got a lilac here that hasn't flowered it flowered once about five years ago and hasn't flowered since so i need to do some research maybe it wants some compost or something so the climbing roses are doing nicely okay standing back a bit to give you a bit more of an overview of the garden that is the swing chair i was referring to that was my birthday present a few years ago and oh my god i love it it's like my outdoor summer office because i can't be seen from the house <laughs> it feels really nice and private i get disturbed less from other members of the family and i can really crack on with work much better than i can as it than if i'm in my study because everyone just leaves me alone because <laughs> i'm not easily accessible so it's actually been one of my favorite birthday presents ever um, this here is a frame of a hammock canvas is over there buried under some bramble yeah it's it's had it now we've had this a very very long time and it's it was really quite fun to have in the old garden yeah we haven't used it as much as we should have done in this garden i'll have to see if i can think of something to do with the frame i saw on gardeners world someone used their old trampolining frame for a uh, fruit cage now i don't necessarily want a fruit cage but i would like to have chickens again but we need to make it totally safe because we do get foxes around here yeah so i wonder whether like put that upright i don't know a good corner support for a chicken run that we can cover in net so this plant here is a berberis it has little purple flowers little sort of fluffy like little clouds in fact look that we've got this one here tiny little one left over that's not a great accurate representation of a berberis flower but um, you get the idea of the colour anyway it's this really pretty sort of purpley blue yeah so again I planted that to be bushy and it hasn't grown bushy it's sort of grown a bit scraggly but it's, it's actually responded really well to me picking it up off the ground uh, the tamarisk behind it that seems to be quite happy that I've tied it right back um, if you've watched a, f a vlog from about the vlog before last that had also just flopped onto the ground I don't know why maybe it's the pressure from all the traffic on the road or something but it, everything seems to be pushed forward and then lastly we're back to the house again and this is the fuchsia that I cut right back and rescued from being ravaged by brambles and it has amazingly recovered so well i can't remember what the variety is called but it is a type of hardy fuchsia and yeah look it's growing right up there and is doing really well so 
I'm really pleased that has, in fact it looks better than it has done in years, so I think it was suffering from all the bramble overtaking it. Yeah, look at that. And then there's another elder just behind it that is just a wild one there. And we've got some cornflowers that are just about finished now. I've cut a load of these back, so hopefully we'll get more later in the summer again. So if you are into your flowers and are interested in gardens then I hope you enjoyed this little segment of my vlog. I'll keep working on this garden over the over the rest of the summer and hopefully by next year it will be in a much better condition. So before I go to bed, before we lose the last of the natural light, there's one more thing I wanted to do today and that is experiment with this plank of wood, again it's for the van. Um, the van conversion is really what we're doing at the moment. That's what we're doing over the weekend. Last night I painted the cupboards that he'd just built, he just finished building with undercoat. And I also painted this spare plank of wood with undercoat. Really, because I want to do a sort of blendy, vintagey effect with the paintwork on it. So, these are my colours. I've got Rust-Oleum Chalky Finish Furniture Paint, and that's my main colour in Coral. You probably can't see, can you see that from there? Maybe you can, I'm not sure. And I'm gonna blend it out with, and I don't know whether this will work, because I only need a little bit, but I got a home base tester in Irish linen. And that's just ordinary wool emulsion. And then I've also got a crown tester called Addiction, which is like a plummy purple. So yeah, I wanna have a go at this blending technique that I've watched on YouTube. Uh, let me get a brush open. So I thought I'd just do a quick video to show you what it might be like. So how shall I start? Oh, one thing I've seen is I need a water spray bottle to keep the water, to keep the paint moist. So hang on, I'll be back in a sec. I think I'm gonna start with the Irish linen because, no, I've changed my mind. I'm gonna start with the coral color. By the way, I know you can do furniture paint straight onto wood, but this wood that we've been getting from Wix is so, so cheap and nasty. Honestly, it's still seeping sap in some of it. So I thought I ought to do an undercoat. Oh, this is just gonna soak straight in and it wouldn't be possible to blend it at all. So I hope that was the right decision. I don't really know. It seems quite watery. Did give it a good stir. I like this color. I wanted to add a sort of, a bit more of a girly touch. Otherwise I can imagine that the, I mean, we've got to share it obviously, but I can imagine the van ending up a little bit blokey. I'm not in my painting clothes. I hope that didn't tell. So here's some advice. Definitely stir well if you have this. Okay. We are losing natural light fast, but this camera is very good in low light. So here we are. I am pleased with that result. Actually, through the camera, you can see that there is still more blending to do, which actually doesn't show very much in real life. Let me just brush that in a bit more. So there we are. I didn't need the water spray after all, and I think that is partly down to having done the undercoat, which makes it very smooth and slower to dry out I think. So there we are, that's the sort of effect I was going for. I have to admit now it's in danger of wiping out the coral. I do want the coral to be, oh gosh that's looking very orange indeed. <laughs> I did want that, that looks absolutely nothing like that does it? I'm worried that it's ended up just being a slightly 
pinker version of the purple so I need to go very very lightly with that purple colour but overall I'm quite pleased with that effect I think so yeah the edges of the cupboards will be sort of shaded if you like and then it sort of looked like a highlight in the middle Rafiki you're gonna get painty pores uh, maybe I should start with the darker colour let that dry a little bit and then go in with the peach anyway it was worth a practice and I can always paint over it if it's not quite right so that's the good thing about paint isn't it I also bought in B&Q this morning furniture finishing wax in antique matte and I like the look of the grey most of the antique oh my gosh how much did I do that oh the undoing the <laughs> undoing the lid <laughs> um I like the fact that this is grey not brown I want um so I'm going to wait for this to dry and as this isn't quite the effect I was going for I wanted a bit more of a contrast I think and instead the purple is just blended a bit too pale so I'm going to have a go with the wax and we'll see what that looks like tomorrow I've had to come back indoors because it's just too windy out there and you'd never hear a word I said um, so yeah I've just experimented with using the antique matte furniture wax I'm very very pleased with the color it's not at all brown it's the proper gray that I wanted but it is a bit like once it's there it's there it's not like paint you can just sort of wipe it off and it dried really really quickly so so this bit obviously went on quite thick I quite like the effect and then I sort of just brushed on a bit like that I quite like that bit too and then just now I got some of the purple paint back on my dry brush and added that and I quite like that effect too obviously that was a mistake and then up here I applied the wax with a cloth instead of a brush and it's definitely fainter but um, you haven't got that sort of antique feel that you get with a brush so I think I just need to practice putting it on very very lightly with a brush and yeah I quite like that there but I think it needs toning down a bit so I've got a feeling the cupboards in the van might gradually improve. I'll start with the ones at the back. of the year so of course I picked today to finish the archway and it is finally flipping done I am oh I am so glad it's done it's nowhere near as pretty or as good as what I had imagined in my mind but never mind it's a good it's a good start I'm gonna call it a good start because I'll show it to you again maybe in a few months time maybe not until next year but hopefully by then I will have trained Ivy up the stakes. In the end we bought four stakes to hold it and keep it sturdy in place. Dug a deeper hole and all that stuff. And now I think it is, I think it will stand up to the wind. I also managed to pull it, pull down the long bits of willow to make it a little bit shorter and a little bit sturdier. So yeah, done. Like I said, it is not pretty. <laughs> but it will look better when the roses are rambling over the top of it and ivy is hiding all the ugly bits. And of course the dead willow leaves need to drop off as well. That's looking a bit messy at the moment too. But yeah, we'll get there in the end, don't we? So I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been up to lately. If you've got a friend who you think would enjoy this channel, I would uh, really appreciate it if you shared the link with them. Uh, that would be great. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time. Hope you're having a good summer. Bye.